Good day to you, beautiful viewers. I am John Nicolas Noel Alvaloria, and today we'll be discussing about the line graph. As this video is a partial requirement for Math 101, class of LCCM. Before we begin, we must ask ourselves, who's that Pokemon? You see, a line graph is a type of chart that normally shows the growth of trends over a given time. There are three types of line graphs. These are simple line graphs, multiple line graphs, and compound line graphs. Now let us try to understand the different types of line graphs. A simple line graph it's a line graph that focuses on the data of a single subject. This type of line graph is often seen in businesses launching a new product or the presentation used in the stock marketing. A multiple line graph is a line graph that has two or more subjects over the same period of time. There are many uses for this one, since it compares two or more data. But one of the most common uses is to compare sales amongst products or companies. Lastly, a compound line graph is used to compare two or more subjects with big difference from each other, usually shaded below the plotted data. This type of line graph is often used in geography to measure earthquakes or potential tsunamis. Next, let us talk about the parts of the line graph. The line graph has four to five parts depending on the use. The four main parts are the title, x-axis, y-axis, and trend or graph, while the fifth conditional part is the legend, which is only added when there are two or more subjects. The title of the line graph explains what exactly the line graph data is about as a whole, so the reader knows what to expect from this data. The x-axis is the line that represents how long the subject or subjects were observed. The y-axis is the line that represents the quantity or frequency of the subject, with the highest number as the last number and zero as the beginning. The trend or graph is a connecting line that shows the growth of the data in between the time observed. Finally, the legend. When two or more subjects were observed or compared, the legend shows which trend is what data. When it's all put together, it makes both is five. <laughs> Joke. It becomes a line graph. Now that we got what is and what makes it out of the way, we can now talk about the why and when. As we discussed earlier, a line graph is used to show the growth of trends over time. Though the bar graph in theory have the same function, but that is not exactly true. You see, my dear viewers, the strength of the line graph lies on the complete details of the data. It takes into account the small changes to the data, unlike the bar graph. This type of data collection is much appreciated when there are constant changes in the value in a short period of time. The bar graph is used to compare large data, usually using the final measurements of the data at that specific time. A good example of this is comparing the net and gross income per month. Okay, as we finish explaining, let us begin practicing plotting. Let us practice plotting. Here is a data table for people in a restaurant with the max capacity of 20 people. 
At the opening hour of 8 a.m., there were 12 people who entered the restaurant. At 8.30 a.m., there were 6 people in the restaurant. At 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., there were only 2 people in the restaurant. At 10, 8 people were in the restaurant. 10.30, 4 people were in the restaurant. At 11, 12 people were in the restaurant. 11.30, 16 people were at the restaurant. And finally, at 12, the restaurant was at full capacity. First, let us label the X-axis with the time observed in our table. First, 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m., 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, and finally, 12. Next, let us label the Y-axis with the quantity or frequency of people that entered the restaurant. With the highest number 20 as the last number, since the numbers are divided by two, we will start with two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Please forgive my drawing, I am no Picasso. Next, let us plot the graph by putting a dot corresponding to each value. First, 8 and 12. Next, 8, 30 and 6. 9 and 2. 9, 30 and 2. 10 and 8. 10, 30 and 4. 11 and 12. 11, 30 and 16. And lastly, 12 and 20. After we finish plotting these values, all we have to do is connect them with a line starting from zero. And this is our line graph. Sorry it looks a little messy. I hope this video was able to shed some light on the line graph. Hopefully you have learned a little more about this not so simple topic. Special thanks to the YouTube channel Wow Matt for inspiring me to make this video. And thank you beautiful viewers. I hope we can start together again. Till next time.